in love with the Mary Jane. The Mary Jane. I'm in love with the Mary Jane. Why do I love this Jesus so much? Because He first loved me. The Bible says, while I was yet in sin, Christ died for me. You see, the Bible says, we've all sinned against the Holy God. Every one of us have transgressed God's law. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, the, the penalty or payment for our sin is death, eternal separation from God in a place called hell. You say, well, I'm a good I'm a good person. What would God have against me? Well, by my standards, I'm sure you're a great person, but I'm not the judge. You see, God gave us a commandment. He gave us a law so that we would know that we were sinners. Let's look at the law for a second. Have you ever told a lie, a little white lie, half-truth or exaggeration? Those all make you a liar in the sight of God. You say, well, preacher, you say... You say, everybody tells a lie. It's no big deal. Well, I'm here today to tell you it is a big deal. See, in Revelation, it says that all liars have their place in the lake of fire. So it's a big deal to God just telling a lie. It says, thou shalt not steal. Have you ever took anything that didn't belong to you? I don't care if it was a ballpoint pen or you robbed a bank. It doesn't matter if it happened four minutes ago or 40 years ago if you ever took something that didn't belong to you that makes you a thief in the sight of a holy God and I'll be the first one to say I've got four fingers pointed back at me if I point any at you because I'm the chief of all sinners here today in the corner of 12th and Grand I'm the chief of all sinners it says thou shalt not commit adultery Jesus said that's a heart condition he said you've heard you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you, whoever looks at a woman with lust has committed adultery with her in their heart already. You see, we've all committed the sin of adultery before God. It says, thou shalt not kill. You say, well, at least there's one preacher. I never killed nobody. Well, Jesus said that's a heart condition too. He said, you've heard thou shalt not kill. Whosoever shall kill will be in danger of the judgment, but I tell you, whoever's angry with his brother without a just cause will be in danger of the judgment. What was he saying? He was saying that losing your temper is equal to murder in the sight of a holy God. What does that make us? That makes us all a bunch of serial killers on the corner of 12th and Grand here today. We all have sinned against the holy God. Romans 6.23, the penalty for our sin is death. It's eternal separation from God in a place called hell. But... I'm so glad God stuck a butt in there. God stuck a butt in there in Romans 6.23. It says, but the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. Now I want you to notice something that doesn't say in church membership. Does it? It doesn't say in being a good person. It doesn't say in quitting, drinking, smoking, and cussing. Did you know you could go to hell stone sober? It's not about church membership. You could join my church and still wind up in hell. It's about having being in Christ, being in a relationship with Him. You see, Jesus said there's coming a day when many shall say, but Lord, we preached in Your name, we prophesied in Your name, in Your name we cast out demons and did all these wonderful works, Lord. See, they were trusting in their works. And Jesus said, I would declare to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And that's the key right there. It's not about your works. It's about knowing Him. And that's what I'm here today to ask you. Do you know Him? Do you know Jesus today? I'm not trying to get you to join a church. You could join mine and still wind up in hell. I'm not out here trying to solicit your money. I don't need any money. I've got a day job. I do this on my day off because I love you. Because Christ shed a, a love in my heart for you to come out here on my day off and say, look, we're lost and headed to eternal destruction, but there's hope. There's hope in the cross. There's hope in Jesus today. It's not about religion or religiosity. I'm not talking about steeples and bells. I'm not asking if you've been dipped, dumped, or sprinkled. I'm not asking if you go to communion or mass or confession. 
I'm asking, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you have a personal living relationship with Him? Do you know the one that conquered sin, death, and the grave? Do you know the one that spoke and the universe leapt into existence? His name is Jesus. Oh, glory to God. His name is Jesus. He's alive. I'm not serving some stuffy dead religion. I'm serving a risen Savior today. His name is Jesus. Oh, glory. The name above every name. At that name, every knee shall bow. At that name, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I'm here today to tell you there's life. There's hope. Uh, that's all I'm here to do. I'm not here to ruin your day. I'm not here to uh, uh, put a dark cloud over your head. I'm here to tell you there's hope. There's hope in Jesus today. Why don't you look to Jesus and have life? Don't you know time is wrapping up, my friend? We see Bible prophecies being fulfilled daily in the news. The Bible told us that in the last days, Jesus said there would be great earthquakes like we see splashed across the headlines today. The Bible said in the last days that there would be whole nations rising against whole nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. That's what Jesus told us. Like we see splashed across the news headlines today. Jesus said in the last days that there would be famines in the land, that there would be pestilences and sicknesses. We see all these things. I don't have to tell you how we just went through the COVID ep epidemic. <clears throat> I almost died from COVID. And I want you to know God raised me up. I'm still here. But I want you to know that the, the, these things Jesus told us would be what we would look for. He said they're like birth pains. When a woman goes into labor and starts to uh, feel her contractions, you know that la the, the child is near. Jesus said in the same way, when you see these events, He said when you see these events taking place, know that it is near even at the door. He's coming back for people that are looking for Him and that love Him. We know that we're in the last days. We know we're in the last days. And I want you to know, sir, God loves you like you are, but He won't leave you like you are. He took an old alcoholic like me. I want you to know He changed my life and He's a life-changing experience. You can't just keep living any old way, doing any old thing. You've got to come to Him. You've got to repent. The Bible says, except a man shall be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus told us exactly what the last days would be like. We know we're in the li living in the last times because God said in the last days that He would unite the nations to pour out His judgment upon them. 1945, for the first time in the history of the world, the United Nations was formed. We know we're living in the last days because God said in the last days that He would drive His people back into their homeland, back into the promised land. In 1948, for the first time in over 1,800 years, they raised the Star of David over... Uh, on the flag over Jerusalem and proclaim their nationality once again. And these were the, the events that the Bible said would take place right before God. Right before God ends this whole thing. I'm here today to tell you time is wrapping up. Bible prophecies happening daily in the news at warp speed. We know Jesus is coming back as a thief in the night. Don't believe anybody when they say they know what day or the hour. Jesus said no one will know the day or the hour. But He did say we can know the season. We can know the signs of the times. Jesus said when you see these events taking place, it's time to look up and watch the sky. Your redemption draws near even at the door. Jesus is coming back as a thief in the night for people that are looking for Him and that love Him. Do you know Him today? That's all I'm asking. I'm not out here trying to solicit your money. I'm asking, do you know Jesus? Have you ever opened the door of your heart? Have you ever let Jesus come in and be Lord of your life? Don't you know He took an old, an old alcoholic like me in 1990 in the parking lot of a bar? A kid named Alex walked up to me. A kid named Alex walked up to me and started sharing with me the Gospel. He told me about a, a father that was looking for his prodigal son to come home and that night 1990 in that parking lot with tears streaming down my face i don't know how he did it but jesus came into my heart and changed my life 
and I'm living proof that Jesus Christ changes lives. I've been having the time of my life serving God ever since. I'm here today to tell you there's life in Jesus Christ. There's hope in the cross. Why don't you look to Jesus? Why don't you look to Him and have life? Don't you know time is wrapping up? Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. You think you've got a lot of time left in this life to do what you want to do and you've got time later to get your life straight? Well, time is not promised to anyone. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day the Bible says now is the time of salvation. Jesus told us about, about a, a guy had a real prosperous year. His company did real good. He decided he was going to store up all, of his, all that he made. And, and he decided he was going to party and live it up. A life of luxury and ease for the rest of his life. And he had no regard for God. And the Bible says that God came to him that night and said, You fool, this night your, your life is required of you. You see, we think we got all this time. We think we got all this time. There's a lot of people in 2022 that thought they'd live to see 2023. Like Lisa Marie Presley. Died last year at the age of 53. Earl Bowen. You remember the movies? The Terminator. He was the psychiatrist in the movie The Terminator. He died last year. Barbara Walters died last year. Nikki Acox died at 47. She was known as the actress in the, in the series Supernatural. Jeff Beck, a musician, died at 72 last year. Christy Alley, known from her, her famous work in Cheers, died last year at the age of 71. Brad Hinkey, famous football player and actor, died last year at the age of 56. Roran Vibert, known from his uh, from the movie, most famously from the movie Saving Mr. Banks, died last year at 58. Stephen Boss, a dancer and DJ, died last year at the age of 40. Joe Marley, the son of Bob Marley. Musician died last year at the age of 31. Clarence Gylord, known from his work in Walker, Texas Ranger, died last year at the age of 66. What am I saying? I'm saying these are all people that thought they were going to live to see 2023. And they died in 2022. Tomorrow is not promised, my friend. Tomorrow is not promised. Take it on a more personal note. One day I was saying those very words when I was preaching down in, in Westport. I was preaching down there in the bar district. And a police officer walked up to me and he said, If you don't shut up and leave, I'm going to arrest you. I said, Officer, somebody in the sound of my voice needs Jesus. I said that God has told me that somebody in the sound of my voice is soon to pass into eternity. And that police officer looked at me and said, if you're not gone in 20 minutes, when I come back, I will arrest you. And the Lord told me to keep preaching. I just kept preaching. He never came back. About two weeks later, I was at home. I was watching TV. And something came on. And I saw all of a sudden saw that police officer's picture flashed across my screen. I real quickly turned the volume up to see what they were saying. And they said that police officer was struck and killed by a drunk driver. The same police officer that had threatened me to arrest me. <coughs> the police officer that I told tomorrow is not promised. He was killed two weeks later by a drunk driver on the very corner. On the very corner that I encountered him. And you see God loved him so much. Then he gave him one more opportunity to hear the gospel. He gave him one more chance to hear this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Now I'm here today to tell you tomorrow's not promised to any of you. It's not promised. God has given you a chance right now to hear one last time this gospel, this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow may not come for you. You might, you might have pulled your shoes on this morning, but it might be an undertaker that takes them off tonight. I'm here today to tell you tomorrow's not promised. It's time to time to quit playing church. It's time to quit playing religiosity and churchianity. It's time to open up the door of your heart and let Jesus come in. You see, in Revelation 3, He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He said, If anyone hears My voice and opens the door, He said, I will come in and commune with Him and He with Me. He was on the outside knocking. The interesting part about that passage is you know Jesus was talking to church folks. He was talking to people that go to church on Sunday. But here, he, Jesus was on the outside. They didn't know Him. You see, Jesus said, Jesus told us one day He will have to say to all of them, people that thought they were right with God, people that said, Lord, we did this in Your name and that in Your name. We preached in Your name. They might have said, Lord, we even went out on the corners and preached the Gospel. Jesus said, I will declare unto them, depart from Me, for I never knew You. And that's the key, my friend. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Him personally? Do you have a relationship with Him? It's not about church membership. I'm not asking if you're a good church member. You see, we got a lot of churches today. A lot of churches think anything goes. A lot of churches think they can live any way they want, do anything they want. And God loves everybody, right? <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. God bless you, sir. God bless you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we read about a guy. He had the hots for his stepmom, it says. Him and his stepmom started having this affair, and he was boasting about it. And the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 5, and he said, you got to put that man out of the church. Turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You see, anything doesn't go with God. Anything doesn't go. <coughs> we got churches today that think that it's alright to live any old way you want. They accept homosexuality. They accept abortion. They accept all these things. And God said, no. Except a man shall be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again isn't some weird uh, hocus pocus uh, mystical thing. It's just a moment in your life when you threw open the flood doors of your heart and you invited Jesus to come in. And you don't have to be in a church sanctuary. or you can be on the corner of 12th and Grand and do that right now. You see, it happened for me in 1990 in the parking lot of a bar when a kid named Alex walked up to me and shared with me this gospel message. And I don't know how he did it, but Jesus came into my heart and my life that day. And I've been having the time of my life serving God ever since. I'm here today to tell you that if, you're li if you think that you got Jesus, but it's kind of boring... I'm here today to tell you you don't have the Jesus I have because I've had more thrills, more excitement serving God than I ever had when I lived in the world. I want you to know He's a life-changing experience, my friend. For the first time in my life, I got to travel out of the country. I got, to, I got the privilege of hearing the Gospel, of seeing the Gospel and being used to preach the Gospel in other countries and other lands. And I'm here today to tell you that it's an adventure. It's exciting when you know Jesus, when you know Him in your heart. And I'm asking you today, do you know Him? Do you know Him? Time is wrapping up. Don't you know? Uh, I'm, I'm not about money, sir, but uh, I appreciate it. Come on, $3, bud. I'll to you. Huh? Oh, well, God bless you. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm not about money, but... Hey. I, you know, I'm not going to deny your, your, your blessing. Lord, I just pray that you bless this brother in Jesus' name. Right on, hey. Do you, uh, do you believe in pro pot? Huh? Do you think no. people are still cool smoking pot? No. No? no. I am. You, you want your money back? No. Nope. <laughs>